The University of Manchester's PCB lab uses a photochemical process to produce prototype printed circuit boards on request by students and staff. The design submitted for production must adhere to restrictions for the production process to be a success. In this video we'll look at the production process and highlight the stages where your designs have direct impact. The process requires you to create designs using an Altium template which are then transposed into Gerber files. For efficiency, multiple designs are combined onto a single production panel which when completed is split into individual boards. It's more cost effective to process boards in this way but it might mean you have to wait for the panel to fill up before the process is started. When the panel is full, the design is split into separate files which are compatible with the Gerber image plotter. Top layer, bottom layer, top solder, bottom solder and drill files. If there are any surface mount components on the board, a separate top and bottom paste layer must be prepared at the same time. So it is essential that paste layers are requested from the outset. For this demonstration, a plated through hole, chemical etched and solder masked board is prepared. PCB board etching uses a process of photographic mass and resistant coatings to selectively remove copper from the surface of a board. The photographic transparencies are created from the design files using a Gerber laser photo plotter. Sheets of photosensitive film are cut under darkroom conditions, one for each of the masking layers and for the surface mount paste layers if used. Each layer from the digital design is exposed onto separate sheets of photographic film by a scanning laser in the Gerber machine. Once exposed, the transparencies are passed through a photographic developing machine to produce the final transparencies. The solder mask is a positive exposure and the other layers are negative. After preparing the transparencies, the drill file from the design is loaded into a drill machine. The drill head moves across the board, drilling all the holes in the design. It's programmed to change drill bits to use the correct size for each hole. After drilling has completed, the panel is prepared for the chemical etching process. It's passed through a scrubbing machine, which cleans the surface and scrubs off any burrs left by the drilling process. Through hole plating covers the inside of the holes drilled through the fiberglass board with copper to create electrical continuity through the board and a surface in the drill hole for the solder to flow over. The board is first immersed in a bath of cleaner and conditioner solution. The baths are electrically heated to speed the chemical process up and so the fluids are continually moved to distribute the heat evenly and prevent overheating, either by a paddle or the board itself held in a moving jig. This also makes sure that the chemical solution passes through the drill holes. The board is washed with water to prevent contamination of the next bath. After washing, the board is put in a bath of pre-dip which prepares the exposed fiberglass in the hole so that the catalyst will bond to it. The catalyst coats the holes with a colloid of palladium and tin. The board is washed with water to prevent contamination of the next bath. The accelerator bath removes the tin from the colloid, leaving palladium behind. The board is then cleaned in an acid bath to remove any residue. The board is washed with water to prevent contamination of the next bath. The board is now immersed in the electroplating bath where copper is deposited onto the fiberglass coated with palladium. The floating plastic balls help to reduce the amount of evaporation from the electrolyte. The inside of the holes are now coated with copper providing electrical contact through the hole. After plating the board is washed and put through the scrubber again to polish the surface of the copper making sure it's clean. It's then visually inspected to make sure the plating process was a success. The plated board now has photoresist film applied in a laminating machine. The photoresist film hardens when exposed to UV light and remains soluble where it's covered by opaque areas of the transparency. The top and bottom photofilm masks 
are applied to the board using the drill holes to accurately align them. If the design has tracks and pads beneath the minimum size and clearances, aligning the transparency becomes unreliable. The board is then exposed to ultraviolet light, which hardens the areas of the photoresist layer that aren't covered by the opaque areas of the transparency. The hardening makes the photoresist resistant to the etching process. And the process is then repeated for the bottom layer. The board is then passed through a developer machine to wash off the areas which haven't been exposed to UV light. It's then rinsed to wash away any remaining loose film. A visual check is done for any remaining resist film, broken tracks or other imperfections. The board is then put through a ferric chloride etching tank which chemically removes the copper not protected by the hardened resist film. There's the possibility of slight bleed of the acid under the protective film which can cause breaks in the tracks if they're beneath the minimum specified width. If the minimum pad size is not adhered to, then there's a possibility that the drill holes will not be protected adequately and the through-hole copper plating can be washed out in the etching process. The etched board is washed and visually inspected before being put in a bath of resist stripper to remove the hardened film. The board is then dipped in a tinning bath which coats the copper with tin, preventing oxidisation and making it easier to solder. The board is removed from the tinning bath and rinsed before being dried. The solder mask is now applied to the board and laminated to it. The solder mask transparency is placed on the board using the etched pads for alignment. If the pads are smaller than the minimum specified pad size, then locating the transparency can be inaccurate. The solder mask is then exposed to UV light in the curing unit, before being passed through the developer bath to remove the exposed areas of solder mask. The exposed pads are visually inspected, before being washed and dried. The solder mask is then cured again in ultraviolet light, and then baked in an oven to further cure it to a hard protective finish. Once the curing process is completed, the board is cut into its individual designs, using a steerable routing bit on a drill bed, which follows the cutout track in the design on the top layer. Once cut, the completed boards are returned to the designer.